what is up everyone i hope all of you are doing great and today i'll be solving a question from rotational mechanics so let's go through the question very quickly i am not reading this whole paragraph i am just summarizing the question for you so there is a massless ring okay which is hinged at point o uh, so that it can rotate freely in a vertical plane there are two beads a and b placed in diametrically opposite points this bead is fixed whereas this bead can move on over this ring okay the ring is smooth frictionless and uh, you need to find out the total acceleration of these two beads just after this bead is released okay so if you release this bead just after releasing it we need to find out the acceleration of a and b okay and the next question is when the whole system reaches a stable equilibrium by what amount of angle or the final angle of rotation of the ring when all the motion ceases okay so after the equilibrium what will be the final angle of rotation the question is very easy so let's start so first what we will do is we will draw the free body diagram okay so we'll break the whole assembly into two parts the first is the ring along with bead a and the second one will be the bead b itself okay as the bead a is fixed with the ring we'll draw it together so this is the ring which is hinged at point o this is the center and this is the bead a this is r and let me draw this one is r root 2 okay now let me draw the forces that is acting on the whole of this system so there are two hinge forces n1 and n2 okay n1 and n2 there is another force mg okay and there will be another normal force that is acting on the ring due to the bead B fine now one thing you need to know that when this bead B slides downward to maintain the position of the center of mass okay to maintain the position of the center of mass the whole system turns in this way in this manner okay and uh, just after the release the horizontal component of acceleration of both the beads will be towards right as the whole assembly as the whole ring is moving in rotating in this direction the horizontal acceleration of both the beads will be towards right okay so these are the forces acting on this ring and bead a and resulting into a rotation with an angular acceleration alpha okay so we know that net torque will be equals to i times alpha where alpha is the angular acceleration just after releasing b so the anti clockwise torque is created by mg here and that will be equals to mg times r and the clockwise torque is created by this normal n into r and these two forces are useless basically in it doesn't they don't provide any kind of torque will be equals to moment of inertia of the whole system is only due to this small bead that is m times r root 2 whole square into angular acceleration now if we observe the bead a from point o we can see that the only acceleration of this bead is perpendicular to this dotted line and that is nothing but the tangential acceleration of a that is the only acceleration of a when you are observing it with respect to o or with respect to ground that doesn't matter and there is a relation between alpha and a t that is a t equals to alpha times this perpendicular distance so alpha will be at divided by r root 2 
So, the final equation boils down to m g minus n equals to root 2 m into a t. So, let this be our first equation. Okay, simple one. Our second equation will be formed by the free body diagram of bead B. So, if you watch the particle B, there are two forces acting on it. One is the mg and one is the normal applied by the ring on the bead. So, that will create two kinds of two types of acceleration. One is the horizontal acceleration sorry vertical acceleration that will be equals to g and one will be the horizontal acceleration and the horizontal acceleration is created by this normal. So, normal is equal to mass of the bead times a x and uh, as I have said earlier that horizontal acceleration of both the beads will be equal and it will be towards right initially just after the release. So, A x will be equal to alpha times r. Okay. Now, if you watch the diagram carefully, this will be alpha times r and that will be equals to A x. Um, so, n equals to m times alpha into r and we know that alpha is A t divided by r root 2 that is m a t divided by root 2. So, this is the normal we are getting and if we plug this equation in equation number 1, we will get m g minus m a t divided by root 2 equals to root 2 times m into a t and that will give you g equals to 1 by root 2 plus root 2 times a t that is root 2 and uh, 3. So, you got a t equals to root 2 divided by 3 times g and this is nothing, but the acceleration of bead a. So, we have got our first answer acceleration of bead a. Now, for bead b, there are two acceleration one is g and one uh, is a x which is equal to alpha times r and alpha is a t divided by r root 2. So, that is nothing but a t by root 2 equals to g by 3 just putting the value of a t here. So, that will give you the net acceleration of bead b that is g square plus g by 3 whole square that is equal to root over 10 sorry root over 10 divided by 3 g. So, we have got the net acceleration of bead b also. Now, let us come to our last question that is the final angle of rotation of the ring. So, after coming to a stable equilibrium situation the whole structure the whole assembly would look like this. So, this is the central vertical line let the this point be the hinge point ok this point be the hinge point let and the bead b will reach here at the lowest point because as it was free to move of course it will try to come to the lowest point of the ring let this be the center the horizontal line and we need to find out this angle theta ok so, let us consider that the bead A is here. So, if this is theta, this will also be theta, this will also be theta. Now, in stable equilibrium, the clockwise torque will equal to the anti clockwise torque. So, the clockwise torque is created by this m g that is m g times r sin theta and the anti clockwise torque will be m g times this distance this gap. Okay, let me show you by some different color this gap and that gap is r cos theta subtracted by 
r sin theta. Now, solving this equation, you will get tan theta equals to half. So, theta equals to tan inverse 1 by 2. So, by this much amount of angle, the whole ring has rotated in this way. Okay. So, the question was pretty easy, but the visualization was important okay. and the initial concept that we have considered, I mean we did not consider it, it is the actual thing that is going to happen that the horizontal acceleration of both the beads is towards right initially. Okay. I hope I was able to make you understand. Uh, go through the video once again if you find it any points to uh, any points was difficult to grasp. Okay. Comment down below if you have any doubts, I would I will try to reply it instantly. Okay. Bye. Have a good day.